What's up guys, Mr. Allen C. Today we're going to be examining the different specimens that are included in the Mega Science Series Earth Science Kit from National Geographic. So here we can see we have a case with all the specimens. We are open it, opening it for the first time here. And they are neatly packaged. Hmm, it's interesting though, there's two empty slots there. And we can see descriptions of each of these here. Let's go to the first one. Snowflake obsidian. The regular types of obsidian is volcanic glass formed when certain types of lava cool so rapidly that crystals cannot form. All right, so do we see the snowflake obsidian in here? I'm thinking that this would have to be it, right? It doesn't have as many white features as it shows in the book, but... It's the closest match. When the lava cools more slowly, crystals can form and give the rocks a textured appearance. The crystal that speckle the surface of the snowflake obsidian are called spherulites, and they are formed from the mineral crystallite, a type of quartz. So, very cool. This is volcanic glass. When the lava formed really rapidly, that's what you get. Very cool. Let's see what the next one is. Okay, we got rose quartz. Should we see if we can find our rose quartz? Let's see if I can focus. All right, up next we got the rose quartz. Unlike most varieties of quartz, this unusual pink stone only rarely displays well-formed crystals. Mineralogists do not completely understand the source of rose quartz, highly prized pink color. So scientists don't really know where the pink comes from, but many believe it comes from iron, titanium, and mag manganese impurities within the stone. And I'm looking here. I'm not seeing a rose quartz. So, was that supposed to be in there? Let me just take a look here. Yeah, I don't think we got the rose quartz, guys. Sorry to say that. Let me check ahead for the next one. This next one's Tiger's Eye. And I am seeing that one here. Hmm, I wonder if, like, the rose quartz fell out of the box. Because it says genuine rose quartz right here. Was it in here? That's weird. That those pieces, I'm not seeing them in the box. That's really weird. Oh, okay. So those two pieces are included in the dig bricks. So you got to dig those out of these dig bricks. I see. Okay, that makes sense. So we're looking at the tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is a lustrous gemstone that occurs mainly in South Africa and East Asia. When polished, tiger's eye displays distinctive bands of color that give the effect of moving waves of brown and yellow and gold as the light catches different parts of the stone. It's a member of the quartz family. It has the hardness of 7.0 on the most scale. But the same as hardened steel. Wow, this is beautiful. That's tiger's eye. Next we have geodes. So, hmm, is that going to be this? No, that ain't it. Which one is it? Could this be it? It's hard to tell, guys. I'm thinking maybe this is the geodes right here because we got the crusty outside. And then the sparkly inside. And that's kind of what I'm seeing there. It says geodes, perhaps the most fascinating of all rock formations. Geodes are hollow rocks with beauty, I'm sorry, beautiful crystals that have formed. These round rocks get their name from the Greek word for shape of the earth. They may look plain on the outside, but you never know what beauty lies inside. So there's the outside. we can focus and there's the inside wow what a geode yeah that's a geode for sure guys we did good there okay what else we got i mean i think this kit's pretty cool we got calcite right here it's common constituent of limestone and is one of the main minerals found in shells and marine organisms so why is this found in shells and marine organisms? Let's try to figure that out. We're going to read more about it here. Take a look at it. 
Wow. What a beauty. This is calcite, guys. Well, I know we have calcium in our bodies. Well, this must be something similar. It's called calcite. And it's most commonly found in marine organisms like oysters. Single calcite crystals have a unique optical property called double refraction. Images seen through the clear crystal appear doubled. Really? So can you see through this somehow? I wonder. I'm going to lay it there and just uh, focus on it for you. Oh, sorry guys. I'm really trying here. Okay, so images appear double when seen through it. Ancient trilobites used calcite crystals in the lenses of their compound eyes. Calcite dissolves into acid and will even dissolve in water. But unlike most subtle minerals, calcite becomes less soluble as the water temperature increases. All right, well, we got our hands on some calcite. That was kind of cool. Let's see what else we got. Coming up next, we got the Desert Rose. Wow, and I do see that one in here. This looks really neat. Why does it have that cool design? Let's take a look at it in real life right here. Look at that Desert Rose. Look at this. This almost feels like a living creature or something because, I mean, just look at all these weird textures on the outside. This is fascinating. I'm going to lay that down. And put the camera on it for you while I read about it, okay? So desert rose. When we hear the word crystal, most of us think about mineral forms with angular sides and sharp points, but sometimes crystals form in a flat plate that stack on top of each other, making them appear flaky. Some minerals form lens-shaped crystal plates that stack in whirls, making them look like rose petals. Under very dry conditions, the mineral gypsum will form rosettes and ferrite, celestine, and a few others. Often the crystals include small pieces of desert sand, giving them a grainy texture. So <coughs> pretty much what they're saying is this formed on all sorts of different... I'm reading about it one sec. Forms in flat plates. So is it a bunch of flat plates stacked? I don't really understand that. That is fascinating. Let's move on to the next one. Pumice. All right, do we got some pumice in here? Um, I don't know which one it is. I'm thinking it's probably this one. I think this is the pumice. It's not the same exact color as in the book, but it's the closest match, and I know each one's in here. So pumice, there you go. That is it. It's a very unusual igneous rock that is typically light-colored because it contains a high percentage of silica. It is formed when superheated lava cools very rapidly and gases inside cannot easily escape the lava. This process traps bubbles of carbon dioxide inside the pumice, making it the lightest rocks on the planet. So yeah, this has uh, bubbles of air going through it when it's lava, and uh, it's very light. It's very light. So there's your pumice, boys and girls. So, looking at agate. Oh, okay, an agate. You find these around here in Wisconsin. The variety of Chalcedony, a type of quartz made up of microcrystals. Agates are translucent, meaning light passes through them. When sliced and polished, agates reveal a beautiful bands of various colors created as layers of minerals were deposited over time in the cavities within their rock formations. So where's the agate? Honestly, I'm not seeing the agate. This must be it right here. There's the agate. Very cool. So this one, you can't know, tell it was an agate till you busted it open. Very beautiful. And fluorite. Do we have fluorite in the box? Should be some fluorite right here. So here is the fluorite. Let me read you a little bit about it. Fluorite is a relatively soft mineral found through the world. Some samples of fluorite will glow under ultraviolet light. 
a property called fluorescence. Fluorite is used in many high-performance telescopes, microscopes, and camera lenses because it allows crisp images to be seen at high magnifications. It is usually light green or purple in color. Very cool, very cool. All right, and then we had two other rocks. Um, I believe it was the pyrite right there. I think that's fool's gold is what it is, fool's gold called pyrite. Shiny yellow gold color and rose quartz. But those are inside of these. So let me see how we get those out of the here. All right, I was pulling these out of the box and I found this really awesome looking crystal. And it's beautiful. Wow, I don't, I don't even know what this is. It was just in there with them. So our rose quartz is going to be in here and our pyrite is going to be in here. I think these kind of look like bath bombs. Let's go put these in some water, see what happens. All right, we got the sink full here. We're gonna drop this one in. Kind of floats. Got some gold here. I took these out of the wrapper. Put that in there. That one doesn't, well, it kind of floats too. And pretty much I want these to dissolve. I don't know how these work, but I know our stones are inside them. So I thought they'd dissolve. I'm seeing a little bit of color change in this. This is really interesting. Okay, I was reading about it. It says you're actually supposed to dig them out of there with the tools they provide. So here's a tool that was in the box. We're going to bust through this. It says be careful. You don't want to damage them. They said also you can add water to soften them. So hopefully that helped. This is pretty interesting. Let's see. Wow, I already see something right there. What the heck? I don't really want to make a mess in my bathroom. What is this? Made out of wood or something? This is really interesting. So we are digging. I sense the rocks right there. I'm going to go right for it. Oh, what do you think that is, guys? Um, that looks like the rose quartz, possibly. I tell you, this is kind of hard to get out. I could see a kid having a lot of fun with this, though. So. Wow, this is very interesting. There we go. So we got our rose quartz right here. It looks beautiful. Now let's get the pyrite. And then I got a mess to clean up. I don't know where the pyrite's going to be. It looks like you can kind of scratch this stuff. Okay. I don't, oh, man, I'm going to have such a mess. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I see some pyrite right here. So we're gonna keep working at it. Oh man, it looks really nice too. Look at that. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Oh, it's hidden pure rock there. It's kind of hard, but I see it right there. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, I feel like a real geologist. How big is this piece? Look, at look, it goes all the way to there. Maybe I need to dunk this in the water quick. See if that helps. Are there multiple rocks in here? No, I think they're connected. Okay, there's a piece of pyrite right there. We'll wash that off. There's more in here for sure. There's another one. And another one. I'm going to try to get these out, guys. Oh, this one's kind of broke up. 
I like feels like you're pulling them out of the earth because they're just crusting out of there. I think we did pretty good. Let's wash up what we got and show you. All right, guys, that was definitely an experience. So here's that pyrite. There were more pieces in there, too. Um, I just wanted to get the video done. So we're just going to look at these pieces. I'm glad we got more than one. Um, so pyrite, also known as fool's gold. And I'm just finding the page so I can read you about it here. I know I found some here in Wisconsin once. And I honestly, as a little boy, I thought I was rich. I thought I found gold. And that happens to a lot of people, I guess. So it says, shiny yellow color of pyrite crystals often let people believe that they had found gold. And it's also nicknamed fool's gold. In fact, most pyrite deposits do not contain, oh, do contain some gold. So those fools may have been on the right track. While gold is a very soft metal, pyrite is hard, two to three times harder than gold. It's hard to, it's so hard you can't scratch it with your fingernails or even a pocket knife. Gold is softer but much heavier. Uh, it goes on, I mean there's another two paragraphs about pyrite, so that's what we got here. And then the other one we excavated was... The Rose Quartz. And it's kind of got a pink color, right? Remember? So they were saying, unlike most varieties of quartz, this unusual pink stone may only rarely display well-formed crystals. Mineralogists do not completely understand the source of the Rose Quartz highly prized pink color. But many believe it comes from iron, titanium, and magnesium impurities within some stone. So that is it, guys. Them were some cool specimens. That was uh, interesting activity. I honestly didn't even know we were going to do that this video. But we dug them out. We got them. And, uh, yeah, pumped. Perfect for the future geologist or uh, anybody who's interested in education or just a good time. Thanks for checking out the Mega Science Series Earth Science Kit. That's just one activity. There's more. You can build a volcano out of periplastis. Plaster Paris, and uh, do all sorts of experiments with it, I guess. So that's awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.